Are you struggling to support legacy systems and worried about security vulnerabilities? Well, join me and my guest, Dirk Schroeder of NNT, as we explore this critical topic on this episode of Between Two Servers. Welcome everyone to Between Two Servers, the series dedicated to IT leaders and professionals. Today we're gonna to be interviewing Dirk Schroeder, who is Global Vice President at NNT. NNT is the leading provider of secure ops, which combines the essential foundational security controls as prescribed by leading security frameworks such as CIS and NIST with the operational discipline of change management. Well, let's go ahead and get this started. So Dirk, when we talk about legacy systems, I know I think to me legacy means old, but aside from passage of time, what are some of the other things that might lend to a system being called legacy? Um, thanks, Don. Well, there are a couple of reasons here um, that can be mentioned. And the simplest of explanation is to think of legacy not as old or outdated, but as the inherited problem. That's the one where IT security doesn't know anything about a specific system. For example, who installed the system? Why was it installed in the first place? What it is used for? Who maintains it or who is responsible for it? Systems where these questions are unanswered are also legacy and uh, one big chunk is also named shadow IT. Now, I know when I think legacy, I immediately think things that are decades old, 20, 30 years old mainframes, but really uh, with the way you describe it, legacy is simply whatever system we used to use, whatever we use before we currently use now. So I imagine this changes pretty frequently. It does, it does. In, 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 in essence, when you are talking about legacy systems in the way I have described it, the, the question is not the age, the question is what do I know about the system? Can I still maintain it? Do I have all the information about it? Now, one topic that's been a, a big hot button for us recently has been the pandemic and how it's affected systems. Now with legacy systems, these are old, they're already in place. So has the pandemic had any effect on that? Definitely it has, definitely. So if it will likely also to continue to do so from, from my perspective. Um, big corporation, mid-sized companies, when IT and IT security is a is a part-time task, there is a lack of documentation, a, a lack of system management and, and change control. And as people are laid off, unfortunately, due to the pandemic, there will be much of these documented, undocumented uh, systems around there. And so as long as no one really takes care about these systems in place, about their uh, their vulnerabilities, if, if no one has responsibility for them, the company inherits a problem. And even worse, that it, it probably doesn't even know about the existence of that problems uh, before it gets hit by a cyber attack. If you don't know about it, you can't protect it. All right, now let's talk more about those cyber attacks. I know one, one industry that's really impacted by this is the public utilities, the public works. So we've seen power grids yep. and water systems that have been affected by having legacy systems that weren't properly being supported and then a security vulnerability happens and, and we, we can have all sorts of effects. So what, what are you seeing in the industry in that area? Quite, quite an amount, I have to admit. I mean, legacy systems is, of course, a problem in, 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 in all the kind of industries. The latest example is the Excellion FTA case, for example, that made headlines. For me, more concerning is, as an example, the, the one in with the Oldsma uh, water treatment facility, where um, the, uh, the attack was uh, aimed at the operational technology systems in that facility. So think of OT as network systems, network devices that are used to operate industrial plants and they are the prime target if you are talking about critical infrastructures. In that specific incident, the the target aimed at a Windows 7 system. So you know it as I do, Windows system is an obsolete, outdated operating system, getting no information uh, security updates anymore. Um, here is that problem, that, that dangerous combo. There is an outdated system operating in a critical public service facility connected to the internet with just basic protections. The fact is, in that specific incident, that it was contained quite quickly, in parts due to lucky circumstances. But the greater concern is that there is the, the overall legacy gap 
that it has highlighted by that. The use of, of systems, of legacy systems, substantially increases the attack surface an attacker can exploit. The attacker only needs to know the details of one specific system where the system administrator in the, in the um, targeted organization with all their various systems in place needs to know a bit or as much as possible about everything. And whatever comes new pushes the legacy system into the back. That's the danger of that asymmetric advantage the attacker has. Now, Dirk, you, you mentioned Oldsmar, which is right here in the United States, and I, I know we've certainly got our issues here with infrastructure. You're over in Europe. Are you seeing the same type of things over there, or is it like different industries that are being affected? No, it's the same type. I mean, it, it is that mentioned gap um, that is present in, in many critical sectors here in Europe, in the US, in Asia, where the, the problem is about the understanding between uh, these critical infrastructures and regular IT guys about what is legacy. I mean, we do think of, of IT systems in terms of legacy when we're talking about 36 months. For them, it's 15 to 20 years. And that is the, the part where you need to have that understanding of, yeah, like, like a CT scanner isn't replaced after three years in a, in a power plant that the turbines will not be changed in the same frequency as we change our smartphones. So the problem will always be around what are the consequences from these gaps? To understand these consequences, that is vital. The systems are there from a, a much longer period than the usual time in which IT security tends to think. And this life cycle difference affects the way systems are maintained and they are maintained for availability. If something needs to be updated, the, the foremost questions asked or the, the foremost question asked by, by the OT guys is, will it work in the same way as before and not, will it be more secure? All right. Now, if there's an IT leader out there who's responsible for legacy systems, what would be the one piece of advice you would give them to help mitigate some of these security concerns? The one piece is generate shared document knowledges knowledge about all the assets you have, whether it's IT or OT, whatever is involved in your business processes, the way you, you generate your value add in your organization, how they interact and communicate. Use that knowledge to establish a baseline, which is anyway mandated by NERC CIP, for example, and make sure that you can detect any changes to your infrastructure, to your assets and systems. Automate that process and let it run continuously so that it is easy for you to tell which change, which um, which one of this is, is bad, is, is a malicious, which has the potential to affect your assets availability. If you can't patch a device, which is not unusual, make sure you know about that weakness and have additional compensating controls in place. Doing so, that will support you in moving forward with digitalization at all and it will also increase your operational resilience. All right, well, it sounds like we all have a lot of paperwork to get to to get caught up on this one. Dirk, I want to thank you for spending the time with us here on Between Two Servers. Thanks, Don. Thanks for having me. All right, everyone, if you'd like to learn more about Dirk and myself, be sure to check out the description of this video. You'll find information and links there. Well, thank you for watching. This has been Between Two Servers.